thanks a lot uh, for giving me this opportunity to talk. Uh, I'm privileged and honored to be a part of a, such a prestigious institute. Uh, I was listening to Nita Ambani's talk where she mentioned uh, very nice about India, saying that 16 Nobel, uh, Nobel laureates from this institute, Dr. Ambedkar from here, Dr. Manmohan uh, Singh, our Prime Minister in the honorary of our uh, website, and uh, K.R. Nana, and the President of India, was also a part. So she said that a lot of souls were walking all around. So taking blessings from them and uh, starting my talk. Before I talk, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Ruth Kutmari, who has supported uh, this initiative of mine on a larger extent. And thanks for giving me a chance uh, to speak on today's occasion. So we'll start uh, with my presentation today. Uh, So I'll just move to the little bit uh, talk of uh, why and how. So as she mentioned, that is the integrated approach for sustainable networking for a Solapur city. I come from the hometown. I came back after 14 years to Solapur. And after like doing a research for nearly six months, we understood some problems do exist. And there is a best solution which exists. And what is the proper solution to be given? So my talk uh, will try to address these issues on a larger base. So let's go with the first slide. Uh, Mark Tevin, who is uh, one of the America's very rich author and a humor, humorist, he puts up his statement in such a way that uh, the human's clothing is best called skin, but society needs something else. So that is what uh, Mark Tevin starts uh, with his quote. So starting with his quote, and why textile industry is necessary, why we have taken the area and what are the problems faced and how to deal with that. So this talk of mine will deal this in a different issues. So if we start with the second uh, point where we say that textile sector in 2012 will be 700 billion US dollars. So that's quite huge. And coming to the second point, India, the third largest cotton producing after China and then second largest production of cotton yarn which is used for developing a textile. So that's one of our basic needs, food, clothing and shelter. So clothing is a part of it. And then if we talk about one more point, which says that 25% of market share of the world for cotton yarn is held by India. So there is a huge opportunity which do exist. And this case study we are, we are putting up tries to address these issues. And uh, the textile sector provides a lot of employment, a lot of employment to the people. So for this uh, reason, as it is one of the richest producing employment for many people around for the peri-urban areas and uh, India been ranking second on this issue. So I take uh, as this as my motivation and move across uh, towards my second slide. Coming to the second slide, uh, here I put up some important facts and figures. The textile is characteristic by some of the issues like it is unreliable and unsustainable due to market fluctuations. When the market collapses, yes, it also gets affected. And uh, the second thing what we are uh, trying to see that in India or specifically at many places in India, we are talking about sustainable textile product is not yet been seen. Uh, if you go to the Primark or anything, we have a tag which shows that whether the product is made of what ingredient. So that kind of concept is still coming in India. So that is what uh, is, it is characterized by. And this has this textile industry, obviously, in the research, what is there, what we have concluded that it has led to some different aspects like water problem, air problem, land reclamation and other things. So taking all together, taking all together, there is a problem. There is a research which can be focused on 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 that basis, what we have done or what we have come out. So that is what I just gave a brief introduction of why I chose textile sector and now I'll tell you why we have chosen Solapur. So these are the problems, this is the best things and this is a little bit on the other side. Presentation outline looks big but uh, I will try to put it together. The outline looks uh, big but uh, the factors what we are addressing are very critical. For example, the first one we talk about the objective, we come out with a little bit of methodology. We talk about climate impact assessment, definitely climate change is there and which, which is very important for every human being and how it has affected the district. 
now we look at on a macro scale i am trying to bring it on a smaller thing called on a very small micro scale so where we talk about is environmental indicators where we talk about air which is our breathing element we talk about water we talk about land and agriculture we talk about talk about socio economic aspects we talk about biodiversity and finally i we also talk about the health and safety issues and then is there a solution if exist and is there a business case out of it so yes the problem is there okay helping in social uh, social terms is one thing and then creating a business case out of it is a different thing so we have tried to put up a business case when i was uh, putting up some points to you at the last telling that how it is different from others and what is the learning out of it so the, and finally i'll conclude with uh, my conclusion it looks big i'll try to make my seminar or presentation a little bit more entertaining or putting up some real facts which you might like in the near future uh coming to the objectives uh, the objectives first was to review different uh, adopted techniques in india definitely we talked about in india and then we moved little bit of abroad when the data was not available in india we took some examples of outside world also to put up that fact then we identified the different impact factors which are impacting environment health safety and biodiversity and possibly uh, we came out with a framework analysis framework which helps for an integrated sustainable approach on different scales so uh, overall looking to this and finally we suggest some policies and other things to our uh, district level planners who are doing it so these are my objectives what i will be talking about or this is my road map which we have worked for nearly 3 months or so uh questions if you have you can stop me and ask me or in the end when i finish my presentation you can take the question answer at that session uh the methodology ad adopted was uh, we selected a region i'll tell you the rational for selecting uh, the solapur as a main reason and then we moved up with some uh, the data was available i was talking to dr ruth also on a larger scale that the data is available but what data has to be taken and what data has to be rejected depends on the detail analysis work has to be involved so qualitative and quantitative data we assumed uh, with our things then similarly factors for uh, impact factors for different things were analyzed and finally we made with an analysis of a framework a model framework called a sustainable networking model which helps to solve the problem okay uh coming down to the we talked about the textile sector on a larger scale we talked about what are the factors what textile industry is affecting then we come across one thing called rational why solapur city why not why why not another city you are choosing why solapur city solapur city uh, has textile industries from more than 100 years uh, solapur city was once called manchester manchester of uh, india where lot of textile industries were there because of some reasons in 1960s 70s and 80s some industries got closed down but still solapur has 25000 power looms a city having 25000 power looms and more than 0.1 million people working for that 0.1 million so 25000 so every citizen is attached to the textile industry one or the other that is what uh, the glimpse of things what we have come out so that was a, ra a rational and i been from solapur work in walchand so that also provided me opportunity to take solapur for data collection other things so what is the problem right now in solapur what is a facing problem is the affluent treatment means whatever the waste coming from the textile industry is not treated it is left out or it is been treated but it is not been taken care so such kind of things are seen so taking this as a whole as one problem we chose solapur as one of the important city which can be taken for the research at the asian at the asian uh, research center just to a glimpse where does this stand sholapur stands this is the india map sholapur is the extreme towards the maharashtra it is the extreme part of maharashtra which is near to the border of three states adjoining states the karnataka and andhra pradesh so hyderabad the capital of andhra pradesh is just 4 uh, to 5 hours from sholapur bombay is just 6 hours from sholapur and pune is just 3 uh, to 4 hours from sholapur so all the headquarters are situated near to sholapur so sholapur has become a junction it's a railway junction an international airport is coming 
and thanks to uh, Ministry of Power, Sushil Kumar Shinde, who was also bringing National Thermal Power Corporation, which is called the NTPC, in Sholapur. What's and the distance to Bangalore? The distance from Bangalore is 700 kilometers. Uh, from Bangalore, it is around 700 kilometers, a night journey, and there is a train which runs every day, Sholapur to Bombay, uh, Bangalore, a train which runs every day from Sholapur to Bangalore. So it is well connected to it. We have an international airport which is coming up. Sholapur has 11 blocks, 11 blocks, a very good pilgrimage place. All people across India come to these places for three gods, that is Pandarpur, Akkalkot and Tuzapur. These are the people from India might be knowing this on a larger scale. It's a technology university. Technology. technology consists of all science, engineering, yeah. economics, arts, everything. Yeah. Okay. So that is what I'll, I'll be talking that in the later stages of the university stuff. Yeah. I can give you more glimpse on that. So this is what consists of 11 blocks, 11 talukas, 150 or 1,150 villages across. So considered to be a rural district, but now on the verge of urbanization on a larger scale. So this is what uh, the case of Solapur, where it looks like, where it stays. Uh, this data, we have taken it from a, a meteorological data, collected the data, put together. So this is uh, taken from a GIS maps and from other research papers, what we have come across. So there are four graphs which are talking about temperature, rainfall, precipitation and aridity. Precipitation is moisture, aridity is dryness factor in the uh, uh, in the weather. If you see the temperature, the temperature of Solapur is rising. I have taken a data from 1990 to 2010 because I cannot put from 1980 because otherwise it will be a very cumbersome chart. So putting from 1990 to 2010. So you can see that graph, the temperature is rising. So definitely when the temperature rises, our clothing habit differ. The cropping pattern do change. So surely there is a glimpse of climate change which might be occurring. The second thing, the precipitation is coming down and the rainfall, huge dip in the rainfall, the variation of the rainfall is coming down and up. So this tells us there is a possible change which is occurring and which has to be taken care right now, not in the later phase. So taking this into the whole picture, I will be talking how this climate has affected on three th or the four things what we talked about the air quality, the water quality, then we talk about socio-economic impacts and also some biodiversity and land and agricultural impact, how it has occurred. And you tell me whether the impact has occurred or not from the presentation and then we will put up some possible solutions and I am looking forward for feedbacks from you also so that we can incorporate in the research and put it on a larger scale. One more important thing where Sholapur ranked one of the 17th, 17 cities in India of the most polluted list, including from Bombay, Delhi and other metropolitan cities in India, Sholapur ranked one of the 17 cities of the most polluted cities in India. So it was a 2007, uh, that is uh, Center for Pollution Control Board and Ministry of Environmental Forest took it very seriously. And they started uh, called as National Ambient Air Quality Monitoring at the two stations at Sholapur. One is installed at the base station called as at the Volchan Institute of Technology where they monitor different parameters like uh, nitrous oxide, SO2, SPM that is suspended particulate matter, RSPM is respirable suspended particulate matter. So they try to measure this and they are doing it from past 2005-2001. And if you see, this has been done, but what has happened is everything has come down, but the SPM is still above the limit. It's above the limit. The reason, the possible reason is the suspended particles which are there in the air. So what kind of suspended particles are there in the air? There are like cotton particles, as I mentioned, there are a lot of power looms across. So there is a lot of cotton particles which are suspended in the air. Second, dust. Third, the roads, the roads which are leading towards that because 
once the rain comes or something the roads get disturbed and vehicles move across and the dust particulate comes into air so the possible reason of this is a combination of these three things so has there been a move to in 